didn't stop. Family shop. Think Thayer. Come on, let's get rolling. Come on, let's get moving. Think Thayer. Hello and welcome to Falcon Weekly here on BGSUFalcons.com. I'm Evan Pivnik, joined by the head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons, Chris Bergeron. Uh, coach, first of all, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, uh, going back to this past weekend against Ferris State on the road, obviously a tough place to play the Ava Glenn and Ice Arena. Uh, Friday night, let's talk about the Friday night's game uh, right now. Uh, an overtime win for Bowling Green, their second straight overtime win. What would you like from Friday night's game? Like the result. Liked uh, liked our special teams. You know, we were one for six on the on the power play, and uh, I think we were good, uh, five for five or something like that on the penalty kill. Um, like the fact that we, we 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 created a bunch. I thought you know we had the chances at you know twenty five to fifteen or something like that. So we felt like we had a bunch of good chances. Uh, and when we're in that twenty to twenty five range, creating wise, uh, that's a good number for us. Um, and and uh, I, I like the way Chris Nell played. You know, I really do. So there's there's um, there was some things to build off of for sure, uh, and, and some things we can tweak and get better at. But uh, ultimately, I, we thought that uh, from a process standpoint, Friday was pretty good. Saturday night, on the other hand, it seems as if it was a kind of the the tale of two games. You have the the team that you saw a little bit in the beginning of the of the season, specifically Ohio State and then Western Michigan yeah. on the road. Yeah, I would say that the difference between uh, those two games and this past Saturday's game was our goaltending. Like, our goaltending was outstanding on Saturday. <laughs> if it wasn't for Chris Nell, that's a 10 nothing game. Uh, and it's a, one of those embarrassments. Like, we, well, a 5 nothing is pretty embarrassing as it is. But first of all, you got to give full marks to Ferris. Um, they, they played an, an outstanding game, uh, as far as I was concerned. And then you look at, you know, you reflect on our game and, you know, we, we do things from a process standpoint on objectives and our objectives on Friday were 11 of 12, the way we had calculated and the way we had evaluated. And Saturday we were zero for 12. So it, it definitely paints a picture for us that our process was pretty good one night and not even exist, non-existent on, 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 on the second night. And it was just, it was a, it was a no-show with the exception of, like I said, with the exception of Chris, we just didn't show up and give ourselves any chance at all to uh, have success. Now, a positive take out of this weekend is has to be the penalty kill for the for the team. Yeah, and and going to Ferris and getting a sweet a split is is positive. I mean, um, I, I I don't care where Ferris sits in in any pair pair wise or, or or standings. Ferris State is a really good team led by some really good players, and I I, I don't necessarily think this season has been exactly what they would have put on paper, nor it has been for us. Um, so getting a split at Ferris is something that is positive. And, 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 and then you go specific to you dig into your, your game. And I, I'll take the penalty kill the way it's been the last, you know, seven, eight, nine games. I mean, it's something that we put ourselves in a hole based on uh, what we, how we played the first half of the year on the penalty kill. And I think it's been much, much better. Again, with the exception, from a result standpoint, with the exception of the Saturday night at, at Mankato, We've, uh, we've really done a nice job on the PK, and we're going to need to continue with that play at that level uh, for the rest of the season here for sure. You mentioned the, uh, the teams on paper and what they are in reality. I see, it seems as if a lot, the majority of the WCHA seems to be that way. There are teams that, you know, look at Bemidji State right now, still at the top of the conference, and no one expected them to be there. Yeah, I, I, it, it's almost, it, it almost sounds like when you hear it out loud, Evan, I agree with you. But when you hear it out loud, it sounds like an excuse. Well, of course, that's what you're going to say. But, I mean, Northern Michigan is where they are in our standings, and I, I believe they had a really good series against Wisconsin early in the year. I, I think it's just, it's just college hockey, right? It's just it's, the, the, at this age, these young guys, it's, it's tough to bring it every day, and that consistency is what separates the great from the okay to the good. Um, and it, it, uh, any night... I think any team could beat any other team, whether it's this league, that league, non-conference, whatever it is. Um, and and I, I believe that uh, uh, you have to be right or pretty darn close to right every night to give yourself a chance, regardless of what the standings or any rankings say. Now, uh, you mentioned North, Northern Michigan, obviously the team's opponent this weekend, uh, but they're a little bit of a different team than the first time the Falcons saw them this year. No doubt about it. They've added some players at Christmas, one in particular being uh, Shane Sooth, who is a senior that uh, was not eligible to play the first half of the year. And he's a guy that's proven at this level, and he's a, he's a really good player. He adds to their lineup. He, he kind of, Dominic Shine, I think, is, and, and Sooth are, are, are two of their top offensive guys anyway, and I think Shine's a better player when Sooth is in the lineup. 
And the other thing I think their goaltending is better is is it's not it's playing better. Their, their goaltending over the last seven years for sure, if not 17 years that I've been playing against Northern as a coach, um, has been strong. One of the one of the key parts of their game every year. Uh, the series up there, I think their goaltending struggled a little bit, and and uh, and it's something that we cannot get fooled. First of all, on, on how that series went, and secondly, where they are in the standings. This is a really good team. It's going to look different. They're playing more confident, and their top guys, whether it be Sooth in the lineup or 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 a goaltender or whatever, just playing better. Uh, and, and I believe they're, they're going to be hungry. They're fighting for a playoff spot, and they're going to come in here with that mindset, trying to. Uh, solidify themselves in the playoffs. We're, we should be fighting for something. We obviously have home ice on the line, and, and hopefully it's two hungry teams playing a high level of hockey. And you mentioned having home ice on the line. Uh, coming down the stretch here in the final month of the regular season, uh, what needs to change or from a, a rest standpoint to make sure the team doesn't, you know, too overworked or see too much time? Well, first of all, I, I, I'll have to rely on the players telling me that they're, they're overworked, and if we have to uh, pull back on practice more, and we'll do that. That's that's not an issue. Uh, what has to change is we need to be more consistent. That 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 unfortunately has been something that has to change. Ha, had to change in the month of October as well. Probably December has been our most cons uh, excuse me. November was our most consistent month. Um, but when you look at one month over the course of four or five, that's that's not good enough. Uh, so that's what needs to change. But if it if it's a rest thing, if it's a a being fresh thing, we can pull back on practice really easy. And and once we get through this, this these two home games, we're, we've got one game over the course of the next two weeks, and that's not in league, that's outside of league. So there's going to be nothing but opportunity to rest and make sure that both mentally and physically we're fresh for that for that stretch run. Well, Friday and Saturday night from the Slater Family Ice Arena, 707 starts. Bowling Green taking on Northern Michigan. Coach, appreciate the time, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for having me, Evan. Appreciate it.